Okay, Beacon Church. It is time for a responsive reading. This is our weekly practice of uh, going through a catechism question and answer style series of, um, of teachings about the basic truths of the Christian faith. We've been using a resource called the New City Catechism, and this is a resource only. We use this resource um, not as something that is authoritative, but as something to point us to God's authoritative word. Last week, Adam showed us from Scripture that the Holy Spirit is one member of the Trinity. He is God. He is a person. He is not an it. At the start of this responsive reading series, we saw that God has always existed as three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, yet he is just one God. That was many weeks ago, but I hope the essence of those truths stay fixed in our minds and our hearts, even though we might forget the details. This week, we'll focus on some of the ways that the Holy Spirit helps us. Um, so I actually don't have the question to, to read, um, but I do, I do have my notes. But I can pull up the question. Elisa, can you get me uh, my phone, please? And I'll need the question and the answer for the end so that I can read it together with you all. Okay. So the question, the question this week is, how does the Holy Spirit help us? Well, one way that the Holy Spirit helps us is he convicts us of sin and enlightens us regarding God's righteousness and truth. Let's consider John 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. So we see here that it's good for us that Jesus left and sent us the Helper, the Holy Spirit, so that he could, uh, could, could help convict us of our sin and point us towards God's Word. The Holy Spirit also gives us power to teach and understand God's Word. Consider these verses. In Acts 4, Peter and John are questioned by the Jewish religious council and instructed not to teach about Jesus. When the Pharisees let them go, they return to their community of believers and tell them what happened. Then in verse 31, this is said about the group of believers. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. So in that passage, the Spirit gave boldness to those believers who were facing opposition from the Jewish religious authorities, and they continued teaching. John 16, 13 says, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. Revelation 22, 17 the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come, and let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. So the Spirit gives us power to teach God's Word, power to understand God's Word, and in a more general sense, Revelation describes him as joining together with God's Church to preach his Word. The Spirit also prays for us. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Spirit also sanctifies us. 
As we depend on him rather than our own works, we grow in godliness. In Galatians 3, the Galatians are called foolish for thinking and acting like the Christian life begins with the Spirit but is later perfected by works. The point is that the Christian life begins by the Spirit and continues by the Spirit. There are many other ways that the Spirit works, helps us, and ministers to us. As you read the scriptures, you will see him act in many ways, giving evidence of God's presence, comforting the brokenhearted, unifying God's people, guiding the church all the way through the ages, and providing divine help for specific tasks. So I'll read the question, and I invite you to join me in responding. How does the Holy Spirit help us? The Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin, comforts us, guides us, gives us spiritual gifts and the desire to obey God, and he enables us to pray and to understand God's word. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for sending your Spirit to your people. We confess that without the Spirit's work, we would have neither the intellect nor the desire to know you as revealed through your word. Uh, Lord, like our reading in, uh, in Romans 4 earlier, uh, we, can, we can come to depend on you um, apart from our works. Lord, we can, we can be the blessed man, the blessed woman, um, against whose uh, transgressions are not counted um, because of, of your revealed word and because of your Son and his work on the cross. I thank you that by the Spirit we can know that and believe that. Spirit, guide us, teach us, and give us strength. May we not grieve you by our thoughts and actions. Rather, let us depend on you as we live by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Thank you so much for that work that uh, we're brought into right standing before God the Father uh, because of Christ's work. Amen. <clears throat>